All right, let's get into it. The post game, the post game analysis of game two between the Las Vegas Aces and the New York Liberty. Listen, uh, my flight was delayed. I got there just right after tip off and Las Vegas was already up 10 points. I mean, it literally looked like teams from different leagues, not no shade, but lots of shade because Vegas came out of the gate like a team that has something to prove. And you guys have heard me say in my previous videos, they're mad. They feel disrespected. They feel like the voters disrespected Asia, disrespected Chelsea. They are mad. And they are playing like a team on a mission and a team with something to prove. What? Look at me. I don't have the stats in front of me because I just got out of a, an Uber and, and came up here and I haven't looked at that. I wanted to do this before I went to bed because I have a 5.40 a.m. flight. But we're talking about a 10-point, 12-point lead within minutes of the game. The Aces are playing at a whole different level. And uh, one of the insiders for the Aces said to me, you know, I was wondering how we would play. We've only seen us play tired. Like the whole league, it's tired. It's a 40 game season. You know, it's packed in there. There's not a whole lot of, there's a lot of travel. There's not a whole lot of comfort in terms of your off days and that kind of stuff. You're just trying to keep people together so that they can keep playing. And this insider said, um, and I wonder what we would look like if we got a little rest. And the fact that we were able to sweep Dallas and then we were able to get that rest whole other level. I mean, even, even the people inside who see these players on a daily basis and know what they're capable of said, this is a whole nother level. We, I've never seen anything like this. And seeing us fully rested, recovered, gives me you know hope for what will happen once the charters start, right? Charters with the plane star, you get a little bit more recovery time, a little bit more rest time, a little bit more kind of in your own zone time. Um, they got a glimpse of that from looking at what the Aces were able to do with having just a week off. So that's, that's scary for the rest of the world, but kudos to the Las Vegas Aces on taking game two because they literally took game two. So let's break this game down real quickly so I can get some sleep. Um, New York just looked like... I mean, they look shell-shocked. I don't think anybody, and everybody I've been around all tonight looking, you know, talking to coaches who are on the staff, co talking to coaches and supporters of women's basketball who love both teams and just being in the suites with people and talking to them about the game as the game is going on and after the game. They said they've never, they've never seen anything like Las Vegas, the next level that they went to. And everybody says nobody expected, nobody expected a, a blowout in the first quarter. When Vegas went up, you know, 12, 15 points, it was like, huh? So New York looked shell-shocked. New York looked like they weren't ready. New York looked like um, they didn't know what hit them. And I don't think it's that New York wasn't ready. I don't think New York thought Las Vegas, just like the rest of us, would come out swinging. I mean, you know, who, who thought that was going to happen? And, um, and I think it just took the, put them back on their heels and they never recovered. They never recovered from that. And if you got a chance to listen to my pregame analysis, which by the way, YouTube was having a hard time uploading. So the whole three hours I'm on the flight from Texas to Nevada, uh, my, my video, my pregame analysis was still 35% uploaded. So that probably um, finally got loaded on YouTube after the game. But if you listen to that, and I'll, I'll try to put it um, as a card at the end, if you listen to what I said needed to happen, um, it's exactly what happened. So let's take a look at these stats. If you look at the first quarter, you can see that Las Vegas got out of the gate like on fire, 38 to 19 in Q1. And then the Liberty had a decent second quarter, outscored the, Lace, the, the Aces 25-14. Then the Aces took took it back in quarter three, 28 to 13, and then 24 to 19. So final score, 104-78, not 104-76, I should say. Not a whole lot of uh, excitement from the offensive end of the floor for the for the New York Liberty. You cannot get down to the aces by a 20-piece and expect to get back. They're just, they're just too good. So New York's got to find a better way to come out of the gate stronger. Um, when I start to look at some of the – 
stats of individuals for the Aces. Jackie Young had 24. Asia Wilson had 26. Kelsey Plum had 23. Chelsea Gray had 14 points. But if you listen to my pregame analysis, I talk about her points and her assists. She had 11 assists. And then uh, Alicia Clark came in and contributed seven points. Uh, Kirsten Bell had a, uh, you know, a bucket. And even Stokes scored. Stokes actually shot the ball. We were all in the suite laughing about that. Like, I didn't even know Stokes could shoot. She made the three-pointer. In fact, she made this three-pointer on the baseline. And I said, who was that? Because I've never seen her shoot. So you had the aces just at a, at a whole different level. And everybody got to play, so it was a feel-good game. The crowd loved it. P- everybody got pizza because they hit a buck. They hit 100 points. Free pizza for the fans. That line in the uh, Mandalay Bay was literally a mile long for the free pizza. Pizza folks really stood in line for that free pizza. The Aces came out the way they do, superstar, superstar. And what didn't happen for New York, if you listen to the pregame analysis, is that two superstars didn't show up. Like one did, and the one that I predicted would did. That's John Quell Jones. But Brianna Stewart had a so-so game. Sabrina Ionescu had a so-so game. Courtney Vandersloot, eh. Like, it's it's clear what needs to happen if if New York is going to have any chance of fighting back in this in this series. Just listen to my pregame because I pretty much map out what New York has to do. And then even in addition to the four superstars, if you will, on the team like Benajah Laney did not have a great game. Nobody nobody had a great game. It was actually kind of worse than it was in game 1. So clearly we know that New York is not going to play that way in Brooklyn. At least I know the fans hope that they're not. And I hope that they're not either because I want to see a better game. I mean, tonight was exciting because it was it was fun to see the, the Aces just be here, be excellent, and then go, you know what, we have another gear. It was really fun to see that. And it was fancy and it was flashy and it was entertaining. And, you know, the shows were good. The halftime was good. The pregame, the, the national anthem was good. You know how the Aces do. They... Uh, Las Vegas entertainment capital of the world, and we know why. So the fans were great. Cynthia Cooper, four-time champion with the Houston Comets, my teammate uh, in Houston, was in the house. Vivica Fox. um, Who else was here? Wanda Sykes. It was a um, star-studded audience for sure. Some great tank was here. Some of these people you may or may not know. But anyway, it was lots of people in the house enjoying the entertainment. But everybody thought it was going to be a tougher game. Um, so now the question becomes, can anybody beat the Las Vegas Aces? Is it even possible to beat them now that they have found a different gear? I don't know. I still have a lot of um, optimism about New York, about what they're going to do, especially in Brooklyn. Uh, I do think at the end of the day, New York has a lot of pride. So I anticipate that when they get back to Brooklyn, you know, they'll look at this butt whooping, they'll look at some film, and then they'll go to work. And that crowd in Brooklyn, I haven't been there yet. I hope to get there next season. But it's amazing in there, just from looking at it and talking to friends who played there and people that I know who live there who go to the the Liberty Games. They say it's an amazing home crowd. So they need to come out, help make this a game, because um, the finals shouldn't look this way. (laughs) I mean, the Aces fans are fine with the way it looks, but the finals should not look this way. It should be a dog fight. And so far... Only one dog has shown up. So that is my analysis, my brief analysis of game two for the WNBA Finals for 2023. What did you think? What did, you were watching. What did you expect New York to do? What did you think some of the challenges were um, in New York, for New York tonight? And did you see the next gear that the Aces went to? And what did you think about that? Um, as always, guys, you know, if you enjoy this content, Show me that you enjoy it by liking and subscribing and sharing. You know, if you have friends who are interested in this kind of content, love the WNBA women's basketball, we're going to give you more of that. Got some different kinds of content coming out starting next week. You've seen the documentaries that we're doing and producing on the players. We literally plan to produce a documentary on every single player in the WNBA um, for this season. I don't know that we're going to get through all of that before the end of the year, but we've done we've done probably 40 that just haven't, they've been scheduled. So you're going to get some of that. And then we're going to bring some old school stuff in. I'm going to take you inside 
um, some USA national teams that I've been on where I play with great players like the great Cheryl Miller, Teresa Edwards, you know, so give you a little bit of the past, the present, and the future as we talk about college women's basketball as well. But if you want to get that, turn on notifications, turn on notifications, subscribe, share, like, comment, get engaged. Um, we want to push this game and we want to make sure that people are aware and putting everybody on notice as to how great the game of women's basketball has always been and continues to grow. All right, so if you enjoyed this, click like, share, all that good stuff, um, and we'll see you probably tomorrow. Take care. Have a good night.